I became obsessed with photography in high school back in the 1950s, and I bought my first Nikon, the Nikon F, seen here in 1967 when I was overseas. Its meter housing has long since stopped working, but I will never, ever sell that thing. I will keep that baby forever. And here are a few of the first shots ever taken uh, by me with that uh, Nikon F. When it was new in the early 1990s, the N90 Nikon sold for around a thousand dollars, but you can get one today for under a hundred bucks. At that price, it's an unbelievable deal that cannot be overstated. The Nikon N90 uses all of my old Nikon lenses, and 30 years later, it still works great. It has Shutter speeds ranging from 30 seconds up to a blistering fast 1 8,000th of a second. It has full 3D matrix metering and you can switch to spot or center weighted, center weighted metering at any time. ISO range is from 6 to 6400. Well, that's a spec sheet that nearly matches the Pro Model F4 in capability. No wonder pros liked it as their backup. Today is uh, one of those days when I feel the need to shoot real film again. And uh, doing that with my old N90 takes me back. I almost forgot that loading a roll of Trivex film into it is so easily done because it's automatic with the camera's built-in automatic loading motor. Well, the old-style film camera has great appeal for us, for many of us, because it is so hands-on. You don't simply take a picture, you make the picture. Angel Adams said that. I did experiment with old slides using Photoshop elements, but I could never quite duplicate the Tri-X look I was after. I bought two rolls of Tri-X 400 film online. I needed to duplicate that wonderful crisp grain going for that sharpness I remember from publications back in the day. When I switched to digital cameras, all my old darkroom equipment got discarded. There's a custom photo lab in town, however, that processes negatives. I don't know what developer they use, and the negatives are good. Well, I was really happy with the results of this first roll of track that I've shot. And I load it into my computer, and oh man, look, look at this scratch. Where did that come from? I can't believe it. They must have used a dirty squeegee to wipe the roll down. Well, that was a couple years ago. <clears throat> this week, I decided to shoot that second roll of Tri-X 400 that I bought. By the way, the Kodak has changed its Tri-X formula a few years ago and now it's called T 400 TX. Okay. I have no idea what that means chemically. 
way above my pay grade. There seems to be plenty of it, however, ordered can be ordered online. However, you must read carefully because I notice much of the Tri-X film online is outdated film. My second role is now two years outdated, but black and white film does have a very good shelf life. Since it could mean a loss of sensitivity, I decided to shoot using an ISO of 200 instead of 400 for this second roll of Tri-X film. And these shots uh, were taken in overcast lighting. I got the roll back the other day, processed normal, no push, all printable, although they look a little flat to me Maybe underexposed, I don't know. I scan negatives at home uh, with my Nikon Super Cool Scan 4000 film scanner. My scanner uses ViewScan software, which is really good, and then I transfer the image. Uh, into the desktop with and use Photoshop elements. Uh, the scanner software allows me to uh, adjust the quality of the, of the image, most of which I'm never sure about, but we soldier on. The quest continues. Well, the idea is to manipulate the values or the lightness and darkness of uh, different colored objects using black and white film. And colored filters help you do that. Greens, for example, are supposedly great for uh, skin tones. And uh, yellow is the standard or K2 colored filter uh, to, m to get a more neutral or natural uh, value uh, in any object. Now then, uh, the, the orange one darkens your skies and makes blue look darker. There's different shades of orange, but the most dramatic one is the red filter. Now for blue skies, a red filter will make them almost black. The scale of an object's value ranges from zero for pure black to ten for pure white. With naturally colored objects, the word hue defines the actual color, but the term value is used to indicate the lightness or darkness of that color. The idea is to create a more dramatic effect using black and white film and the N90. Shot uh, in a digital Nikon camera and then converted in Photoshop to black and white, eliminating all the color. And this is what you get. But I wanted that grainy Tri-X look, so I bought some Tri-X film. So uh, with photography, chemistry has taken a backseat to digitally manipulated images both in the camera and in post-processing. It's now easier, faster, cleaner, and uh, cheaper. But the old school skills are still around. All these pictures using film have been digitally manipulated by me in the film scanner and in the computer using Photoshop Elements, my photo editing software. Their values have been tweaked to my satisfaction. The great thing about it, though, is how easy it is now to repair or eliminate scratches and dust marks in the image. I uh, need to do that a lot. Film scanners do a great job, and there's plenty of great used equipment available out there, of course, you got to do your homework when searching for the best value. Mm -hmm.